guys and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Girija Kherkar and I have passed the FMG December 2023 in my first attempt itself. So if at all you are an FMG aspirant looking for a strategy, trust me, you are on the perfect video. Thank you so much for showering your love and support on my last video in which I shared the overview of my entire FMG journey. It was not an in-depth video, but this one is definitely going to be as you guys mentioned the common question in the comment section of that video and also in my DMs, which was how to approach the 19 subjects, what order should you follow, which subjects should you go for rapid revision and for which subjects you should go for main videos. For which subjects you can skip or which subjects you just cannot skip. Trust me, you are going to get all your answers in this one video. Starting with the approach. So my strategy always, no matter if it is for studying or for other projects, I just choose the difficult or the big tasks first. And in this matter, Obsgyny, surgery, medicine and PSM are the subjects which are comparatively larger and require a lot of time and effort, but they also secure as close to 120 marks. Trust me, 120 marks. FFG is an exam which is a battle of just those 150 marks and to secure those 150 marks you have to learn the major chunk first and the major chunk includes obscaining, surgery, medicine and PSM. This is the exact order I started with and then I kept PSM on the hold. For all the three subjects I studied it from rapid revision videos which were provided by Marrow. I did not have any other subscription for GTs or for you know Q banks. I just went with Marrow and YouTube. These were two main sources that I used. I did not have any other subscription. But if you ask me if so and so apps videos are good or not, each and every app has a really good faculty. All you need to do is trust that app completely and do not switch your source. Switching sources can literally lead you into a big confusion and that might not be good for you. So whichever application you have or even if you don't just go with YouTube or just go with the app that you already have and make sure that you revise the content frequently. So once I was done with obscure knee surgery and medicine I kept PSM on standby and I'll tell you why and what happened as a consequence of that in the exam at the end of this video but for now let's keep PSM on standby. So I completed these three subjects and then I went for the medium level chunk which will give you 15 to 20 questions each out of which the priority goes to ophthalmology and ENT. Trust me these two subjects are so damn important for your FMG examination that they can easily give you 40 marks in which there will be no confusion for marking the answer if you know your concepts correctly. I had studied ophthalmology from the main videos during my semester exams so it was really easy for me to go through the rapid revision videos but what I found out was almost all the content almost close to 90% of the content which was taught in the main videos was well covered in the rapid revision videos. So you can definitely go for rapid revision for Optha if you haven't watched the main videos yet. For ENT I did the same I watched the rapid revision video but for ENT I hadn't watched the main videos okay now moving on to pediatrics pediatrics is an important clinical subject can be easily covered in a maximum of two days from rapid revision videos so go for rapid revision videos of the same then comes the bigger chunk from the preclinical subjects patho microbio pharma physio anat biochem these six subjects are something that you kind of lose touch with if you are not revising it during your MBBS years. And if you haven't studied them well, no worries. Go for the rapid revision videos. They will definitely help you. But for me, one of the major challenge was biochemistry. I am not interested in biochemistry as a subject ever since I started my MBBS journey and watching the rapid revision videos felt like a really big task. I just watched, I think, two videos and I gave up that listen I can't watch this anymore I cannot torture myself because I don't like the subject which might be a completely different case for you and that's okay so that's when I opted for this book which is the USMLE step one first aid this has biochemistry in like 80 pages in a very concise and very high yield form so what I did was see vitamin deficiencies enzyme deficiencies and you know the kind of structural proteins and stuff 
it is extremely important you cannot skip that because if you have to get one liners in the smg examination it will definitely be from biochemistry these are factual questions that you have to study so studying from the usmle step one first aid gave me a really good overview of the subject and i had a tabular form for everything which was easy for me to memorize so if at all you are like me and you can't just study biochemistry download the pdf of the first aid step one and you'll be good to go if you don't have the pdf please join my telegram group i'll be sharing much more important pdfs latest video links and notes on the channel so link is in the description join my telegram channel for more details then coming up to subjects like physio Microbio, Patho, Pharma, Pediatrics, Optha, ENT. I did rapid revisions for each and every subject and they helped me pretty good. But anatomy was again a task because after first year I kind of lost touch with the details of anatomy and anatomy has a lot of content to cover even in the rapid revision videos. If at all you are a marrow user you'll know. I think in the last 10 to 15 days I went for YouTube. And in YouTube, Dr. Azam's anatomy lectures was something that were worth watching. Those lectures literally gave me four to five correct questions in my actual examination and gave me a confidence that, okay, I'm not skipping the subject entirely. So, you know, sometimes pseudo confidence can also give you a great mental stability in the actual examination. So, Dr. Azam's lectures were something I watched for anatomy i'll put the link in the description box below you can watch his videos in the last 10 to 15 days if you haven't studied anatomy from any of the sources coming on to the shorter chunk the short subjects which everybody loves because they give us a pseudo confidence that okay i have covered these many subjects but trust me they should not be on the top of your priority list i'll tell you why completing these subjects can definitely give you a confidence that okay i've completed these many number of subjects but in the actual examination, the chunk of the questions that these subjects provide is very less. So these are definitely scoring subjects, but they can be easily covered in the end of your preparation when you are under pressure, you have less time, you cannot cover the larger subjects in the end. So it's better for you to keep these subjects in the end because number one, you can just easily get done with them. And number two, this will also boost your confidence when it is much needed in the last few days. So talking about dermatology, radiology, orthopedics and psychiatry as well, keep them for the last. Now there's a twist over here. I did the psychiatry main videos during my semester examinations and when I watched the rapid revision videos, they were not enough. And I'm talking about marrow over here. If you feel that the rapid revision videos provided of the subject psychiatry in your app are good enough, please stick to it. But this was my opinion that Marrow rapid revision videos for psychiatry were not enough to score marks in the actual exam or in the QBanks. I had done the psychiatry videos earlier. That is why it was very helpful for me. And I don't think psychiatry has a lot of video lectures. It is really doable in maximum two days. So if you want to score good marks in psychiatry, go for the main videos. Talking about forensic medicine, it is an interesting subject. You can easily get two to three marks with it and rapid revision videos are enough. I followed Dr. Mahindra Maro faculty and he also provided a PDF on the Marolinks Facebook group that helped me a lot to revise all the content in one PDF at one glance. So if you want that PDF, I'll share that as well. I'll put the link in the description box below where you can download it or I can also share it on the Telegram group if you want. Dr. Mahindran's PDF was really helpful. Now coming back to the story of my PSM. I kept it on hold. I did not study PSM that much. And in the end, I really couldn't study PSM. So what I did was I watched YouTube MCQ discussions for the same from very different random channels and then um, it gave me a confidence that okay I can do PSM but I wasn't in the mental state to study PSM and I was like okay this is my last resort I'm going to skip PSM and that's when the chanting sessions came to the rescue as I told in my previous videos the chanting sessions by your chanting doc Paras really helped me in the last few days I used to revise as good as six to seven subjects in just one day in a matter of six to seven hours and that's where I studied PSM from. 
I really did a very short chunk of PSM and I regretted it on my exam day so much. I do not suggest skipping PSM. I had a mixed review about PSM from the people who had given FMG before and I did not take it that seriously. I'm very glad that I passed the examination with good marks. But PSM is something that could have gotten me even more marks and if you have skipped a lot of subjects, PSM is something that you should not skip. I did not skip a lot of subjects. I skipped ortho completely, almost completely, I can say that. But I did not skip any other subject beyond that. Even anesthesiology, I completed it from rapid revision videos and it was good to go because most of anesthesiology is covered in, you know, other subjects as well, like medicine, pharma and surgery. So, yeah, I did the five videos that were in the, the Marrow app for rapid revision. But for PSM, you have to do it. Every other question in the December examination was from PSM and you cannot mark a guess answer very easily. PSM is basically facts. If you know it, you know it. You don't know it, you don't know it. So try doing PSM from the rapid revision videos or from YouTube, whatever you prefer, but make sure you solve all the PYTs, all the PYQs and all the past papers. That will really help you to analyze what kind of questions are actually asked in the exam. Coming on to radiology. Radiology is a subject that requires your photographic memory to be really, really good. And Dr. Zena Bora's YouTube lectures was something that I watched for radiology along with the rapid revision videos that I did in Marrow. But trust me, I think those YouTube videos worked pretty well for me. The way Dr. Zena Bora explains radiology is phenomenal. You should watch her YouTube videos. I'll put the link in the description box below. They will really really help you score at least 10 to 15 marks because you know radiology is an integrated subject and when she teaches in the YouTube lecture she combines other subjects along with radiology which gives you a revision as well. In the last few days I had also watched Dr. Rohan Khandelwal's videos which was so good. He posted it on his YouTube channel and that completely revised my entire surgery after I had watched the rapid revision videos. So you can watch those videos as well. Also, Dr. Sakshi Arora Hans for Obsgaini. I mentioned it in my last video as well. She is so good with the concept teaching part. You can cover a lot of content in very less time due to her amazing teaching skills. I'll put the link of their YouTube channels in the description box below. So guys, this is the overview of my entire journey. Okay. So now summarizing and answering three of the most important questions that you guys have asked me based on my last video and in my Instagram DMs, which is number one, are rapid revision videos enough? Trust me, they are enough except for subjects like psychiatry. For psychiatry, the main content is not that much. Please watch main videos for psychiatry. It can easily give you marks. For biochemistry, I use the USMLE step one first aid. I did not watch the rapid revision videos. And if you have time, try covering content for PSM and medicine from main videos because I think these are very vast subjects. So the, so the topics which are previously asked in the examinations, at least try watching those topics from the main videos. But rapid revision videos are enough only and only if you revise them minimum two to three times. If you don't revise the content that you learn from rapid revision videos, it is of no use. At least revise two to three times before you sit for your examination. And number two, how to solve Q banks and GTs. Once you complete the rapid revision videos, revise the entire content first. Once you are done with the revision, Solve the QBanks. If you don't have the time to solve the entire QBank list, go to the PYQs, search for the previous year topics, mark those and then solve all the questions of those topics at least. Once you're done with that, go to the PYQs of the, of the subject that you have completed, solve all the PYQs. PYQs are really important. Solve all the PYQs, read all the explanations. In this way, you can complete two revisions of the subject and one final revision before your examination. There are two ways of revising a subject. Number one, you can read the notes which are provided in the form of PDFs or printed notes by the app itself. And you can re-watch the video at 2x speed. Do whatever works for you and whatever saves your time. And the third most asked question was, how many hours did I study? See, I used to get really intimidated when people used to say I used to study for 14 hours and 16 hours and along with internship, it was a bit difficult for me. So in the beginning, I just focused on the content that I had to cover instead of the hours that I was going to study it for. 
sometimes you can cover the same number of topics in half the time if you are really focused but it might take you an entire day if you are not focused so that long study hours may not count but if i have to give you a number i started studying for like 6 to 7 hours every day in the initial few months and when i was really dedicated studied for almost 12 to 14 hours a day but trust me even you will study for that many hours when the exam is really close because it puts a positive pressure on you so please do not get intimidated by the numbers i hope i solved all your questions but if you have any more questions please follow me on instagram my instagram handle is at the rate dr girijakhirkar you can also dm me on my gmail which is dr girijakhirkar at the rate gmail.com you can join my telegram link i'll provide the link in the description box below and you can also put all your queries in the comment section below I'll be really happy to help you with that and trust me if you were looking for a sign this is the sign you're going to pass the exam with great marks just keep revising keep solving questions and that's it I hope this video was helpful and if it was please subscribe to my channel so that I can share more details of the FMG examination with you till you pass the examination okay so don't forget to have your cup of positivity and thank you so much for watching this video